Beginning with this uh, free content scene that I provided for Bryce 7.1 Pro, I'm going to convert this into a red hot poker. So, I take the kettle body and select the wooden handle, and then go into the material lab. That will provide a metal handle instead of a wooden one, which would seem more appropriate for a red hot poker. And I convert it to brass by changing the uh, the colours in this texture component to yellowier ones. So I'm just picking those off a palette on the other screen for ease. So that's now a brassy mix of colour, and I'm going to reduce the reflection to 20. So now I'm going to get select the kettle body again and get rid of that. I don't need these fasteners and this handle material. I'm just going to convert that um, into uh, I don't know, a sphere, just something to store the uh, the metal material while I work on the handle. So I'm not using that bit. I'm using this bit. I'll get rid of this light source. If I hold down Control and Alt and click on one of these control dots, that'll scale it so that it's aligned uh, sort of north-south. If I look from above, you can see that. And then I'm going to change the attribute so that it's at the origin of the scene. So it's now at the origin and resting on the ground. Now if I introduce a cylinder, I can use that to form the what what's going to be the the metal part of the the poker so I'm just lining that up at the middle of that handle and then I can I can extend it out to whatever length I want to make the the main handle uh, the main body of the poker I don't want it quite that thick I don't think so I've reduced that a bit and uh, then when I'm happy with that I can take this sphere and then select the cylinder and go into the material lab and that'll transfer the metal over onto that cylinder. I don't need curvature on this, I just need that to be a straightforward metal material. So if I just get rid of those those two channels because it was mixing this other one that on on the uh, according to the geometry of the curvature, but I, I'm not going to use that here, so I'm just using this dark metal. So now when I have a look at it, that's just a dark metal and I can get rid of this sphere here because that was just to store the material. Now this end bit is where things are going to glow so I'm going to need like a transition between the cold metal and the hot metal so I'll copy and paste this cylinder then I can I can slide it along a bit and then um, shrink it down so it's just meeting up with that one and shrink it down the other way and this is going to the transition between uh, cold and hot so if I go into the material lab to achieve this transition I'm going to use object space and altitude so if I go to actual selection you can see how this works so if I go and um, it's going to the ambient color which is obviously going to have to be sort of a, a glowing hot metal color and uh, so that wants to be sort of an orange so I'll select a, an orangey color for that and then I'll control that from this channel here I'll check that it's got alpha scaling enabled so that means I can control the level of ambience in this channel. And I'll hold down the shift key and click on the texture, and then go into basic and get my basic altitude. Go in the deep texture editor and I'll use the alpha channel to control it. And then once it's uh, object spaced mapped, I'm going to have to change the frequency here. So I can see now it's starting to come in. So increase the frequency and that's um, controlling the, the sharpness of the transition between hot and cold and then I can use the offset here to move it backwards and forwards. And these are the two outside ones that don't really do anything it's only the y direction that I'm interested in and it's just uh, fortunate that the object's altitude that's its y direction that's the uh, direction it's operating in so that's convenient for us. could also use transparency because this allows to put light sources inside the metal so keeping the refraction at zero, if I introduce transparency controlled by this altitude, it'll make the wrong bit transparent. And you can also see at the moment we're in uh, blend transparency, so I use normal. What I want is that transparency going where it's going to be hot. So and, uh, I'm going to use a volume colour here, so I'll give it a yellow colour, so that'll complement the orange, but I need to get that bit transparent there. So I need to invert this altitude mask in the transparency channel. So I'll, I'll put a control in here and 
begin by using the basic altitude and then we can see that its settings uh, are the same as that one, that's handy. Uh, so what we can do is invert this. To do that, I go into the editor, take, take the alpha mask, transfer that component into the second channel, use subtraction, go in here and change this filter to a sign and then I can make the filter fully white so that creates an inverse now and you can see immediately that makes that a lot brighter and also it's gone transparent which is like I say handy for putting light sources in. So what I can do now is using this offset slide the transparent bit towards the very end so we've got this transition to red hot. Actually I suppose I should say yellow hot. Right let's have a look how that looks in the render. Right okay not bad now we need an end of this poker so to do that I'm going to use the create and use these additional primitives made by Rashad Carter and I'll use one of these to uh, let's see which one, uh, that one I think so one of these to, to place an end on there so I'll, I'll just rotate that round a bit so it's in appropriate direction and then slide it down towards the end zoom in, I'm going to shrink it that's it and place it along the end there we'll see that it's lined up in one of the other views okay and then copy and paste that and rotate it round that way and then slide it along and make it a bit pointier so that that's now the end of the poker it looks a bit big actually now if I select both of them I can group them and shrink that down and move that along there and then I'll take the cylinder and select the group go into the material lab and exit and that will have applied the material to the end of that but it's not really right yet so if I select that group again and select the material I just need it to be glowing and um, so we can we can lose specularity and reflection because the glowing bits don't have those it can be fully transparent and we it can be ambient all over and uh, well that's about right now but that does raise the point of about the reflection and specularity on this other bit so if I go back to this cylinder here and go into the material to think about it I can use this basic altitude the inverted one to make sure it stops being specular as it gets to the transparent bit and also I can use it to make sure it stops being reflective when it gets to the transparent bit and so now I'll just check we've got alpha scaling engaged yes that will mean that as it gets to the very end there there'll be no specular or reflection response which is appropriate so it only goes so far and then it's uh, it stops now the next trick then is to get some light sources in here so if we go and create a light source we can uh, we can slide it onto the ground and get it down level with the cylinder there so it's, it's about in the middle and then shuffle it along to the very end here where it's needed so I'm just zooming on that bit there where I'm putting the light source so there it is and hopefully that'll be appearing in more or less the middle and I'll edit that and it wants to be an orange colour so I'll pick, pick that off this other screen now and to set the intensity at five and then if I I can copy and paste that and uh, move it along a bit copy and paste move it along a bit because it's going to be a general light from this um, and it doesn't want to be specific or otherwise it'll generate harsh shadows so I'll create a few and since this is a hot end I'll, I'll make that selection of three a bit brighter so we've got six lights in there going towards this very end to make it bright and that's the red hot poker thing so if I group that as one object and then I'll add that to one of these libraries that one will do right and then I'm gonna have to create a bit of background for it because it's a bit boring so we'll save this lighting setup that we've got here I'll add it to this one there we go I say it's got a new and save that and then I'm going to use the Bryce tutorials.info 
we go to Bryce Downloads and select Gritty Texture Tiles with Matching Terrains. I've already reloaded that one actually. And I'm going to use this one, which is quite dark with some stones on it. So I've got that here. And I'll, I've, and I've saved the lighting setup and saved the the object itself. I can I can load that scene in. So I've, this is a single tile. I'll get rid of the ground, and then I'm going to duplicate this. So I can just hold Shift key down and it steps it along one. So this is just to create something to get to act as a background for the poker because it's got the light sources built into the end I want, s want something that surface that's going to respond to it to show off the fact that it's not just a bright yellow thing so I'm just using copy and paste to create a grid of these and then because there's a small bounding box I need to alter the attributes for this so it's 82.08 scaling for X and Z and that'll reduce all the gaps between them and that creates ground for me to put the poker on. I go back into the create library and get the, the poker out and then place it over this ground. I'm going to have to scale that up a bit because I don't want a, a shot where you can see the um, the edges of the ground. I want it to be continuous but it, uh, it's designed so it tiles so that's not a problem. I'm just tilting the poker now so it looks like it's resting on this background and then I'll rotate the camera a bit and get this in shot. So the the last things to do really are lighting changes. So I've got my sky that I saved here, that's the original, and in the sky and fog I'm going to get rid of the sky dome light altogether, so that should darken things. I'll leave the haze in because that makes the metal look dull, but I'm going to modify the sun so that it's only producing a bit of diffuse light and then use the HDRI backdrop to provide some of the light as well so that should give a, a more rounded lighting response and it's also a bit darker so that the, the fact that this is glowing hot now is apparent because it's affecting the stones around it. So the last thing to do is to see if we get a much brighter light in there what will happen. So I'll select one of the radio lights slide it along a bit, little bit towards the end and edit that and I'm going to make that brighter yet towards the yellow and make that 15 and 15 just to add a bit of a highlight at the end of that it's taking a little bit of time now because there's a lot of terrains in this so that's brightened it even more so and uh, you can really see that it's producing a bit of a glow there now and all this is uh, on these rocks they're casting shadows on one another so you can see that it's, it's, it looks like this object is glowing because the light sources are hidden within it and the the progressive nature of the transparency means that you've got shadows there so I'll just pause the video and let this render out now I've stopped the render well since it looks like I'm going to overrun again in spite of my best efforts to try and get it in under 15 minutes what I thought I would do is modify the material on this group here to be a little bit whiter and that will let more light through so it'll look even hotter than it did before almost like white hot there but then I can change the the light source perhaps here yeah, some radial lights in there somewhere um, I did that radial light source and make that a redder colour see how that looks. So it should have some red in there I was thinking. It was looking a bit yellowy. So like that. So it's both lighter and redder. And then I was thinking um, what I could do is use depth of field effect, set it to the current selection which is that light source. I'll use low rays per pixel to begin with and uh, as you know I've also introduced a tutorial that allows you to do the rep depth of field even on fairly uh, modestly powerful computers so you don't you can utilize um, if you can utilize a paint package you can use the object masking available in Bryce to do that so a, a little bit of depth of field effect might be nice here just to um, to give a sense of scale 
So I'm going to increase the lens radius there. That'll increase the level of the effect in these in this distance objects. As the uh, effect gets more uh, pronounced, you need uh, higher rays per pixel to cover the noise up. So for this level, uh, a good level would be 64, but that is going to take quite a long time to render. As you can see, this is uh, now quite slow. And one of the reasons for that will be all multiple light sources and high dynamic range lighting. So this is a good point to look at the depth of field tutorials, particularly the one that uh, allows you to um, produce the effect using um, using the method with the Paint Shop as well. So, well, for um, Paint Shop Pro, yes. So, okay. Well, I'll uh, I'll process this and I'll let you see the result in a minute. Here then is the final result. Uh, following my own depth of field tutorial, the extended version, which shows you how to uh, use, uh, say, a paint package to create, well, modify the distance mass so you can create a soft uh, depth of field effect from a low rays per pixel render. I used four rays per pixel instead of the 64 because that was going to take hours to render out, whereas this took about five minutes. I blurred that then rendered a distance mask and also rendered a sharp version just using the ordinary render mode of the uh, image and then combined them in the paint package but as I said that's covered in the other tutorial this is mostly about creating a glowing effect of, of hot metal and how you can uh, get the light sources inside the material by creating the transparency and use the ambient to create the illusion that it's glowing as well as the light sources and uh, well I hope this uh, has been helpful to you and uh, that it will help you in your uh, in your in your own renders and uh, and that's it really so I hope you enjoyed that